it's all about dessert. Italians love their desserts, but like any European culture, they're really smart in that they don't eat huge desserts. They don't have desserts brought to the table by four waiters and it looks like the size of the Great Wall of China. What they do instead is eat little tiny desserts, three bites, because they know that after three bites, your body doesn't taste sugar anymore. So they savor those three bites, these little delicate desserts, and that's how they can enjoy dessert and not have it land heavily on their hips. So we're gonna make something called baci di dama, which means ladies kisses, and you'll see why they're called kisses in a minute, but let's start making them first. We're gonna take five tablespoons of vegan butter. You may use whatever brand you like. And don't get crazy with measuring. I mean, measure, but don't, you know, you don't have to like give yourself a stress attack. So, and this, this cookie is so easy. Everything goes in one bowl. You don't have to measure the wet then the dry. It all goes together. So we're gonna put a teaspoon of vanilla, just about. Make sure you use really good vanilla when you're making dessert. You wanna be able to smell it, that it's so lovely you wanna dab it behind your ears and walk around smelling like a bakery. We're gonna use a half teaspoon of baking soda, two tablespoons of arrowroot. Arrowroot is gonna behave like the egg in this, so you need about two tablespoons. Four tablespoons of coconut sugar, that gets measured in. A pinch of salt, just a tiny bit to make the cookie sweeter, I know. And then it's a cup of almond flour. Some people call it almond meal, but it's almond flour or almond meal goes in. And then we're gonna take either whole wheat pastry or whole wheat sprouted flour. I love sprouted flour because it's light and it also will um, help us to digest it as a vegetable, not as a carbohydrate. Then everything's in one bowl. So now you just take your mixer on, on low or slow, otherwise your kitchen's covered with flour. And you're gonna mix this together until it forms a homogeneous soft ball of dough. It takes about two minutes, not even. It starts to come together looking like wet sand, and then it comes together as a dough. And as soon as it really starts to gather, you can also do this in a stand mixer, which I love, but there's something about your hand mixer that just, I don't know, it always will have my heart. So then you pull the dough together, and now you make the first part of the kiss. You're gonna turn your oven to 350, and then you'll take little pieces of dough. They're about, I wanna say, a quarter to a half teaspoon. Like a little tiny, right? It's as big as one of your fingernails, and it goes onto parchment paper. Now, when I make these at home normally, I line them up perfectly, perfectly. But when I watch other people make them, they just kind of make them and throw them onto the tray. and right? They don't really line them up, but I'm a little um, you know, OCD about it. So, but you want to fill your tray with your dough. You'll get about 70 of these little balls of dough onto your tray. And then this is going to go into the oven at 350 for 10 to 11 minutes and be done. OK. Now what we have to do is make the filling that actually allows the cookies to kiss. So we'll take some rice syrup and water and we boil them together. This is sort of like making a ganache. And then we'll take some non-dairy stevia sweetened chocolate chips into a bowl, grab a whisk, and pour this boiled mixture over the chocolate. And you want to just almost cover the chocolate, but not quite, because we want the filling to be a little on the thicker side. You don't want it to be runny like a glaze. And then you get in here and you fight with the chocolate just a little bit, and suddenly under your whisk, it turns creamy and smooth and shiny and thick and gorgeous, and you know you've done it. So once you have that the way you like it, that texture, it's nice and shiny and smooth, set your whisk aside and take cooled cookies. The cookies have to be perfectly cooled, perfectly cooled. And now they kiss. You take a cookie and a small amount of chocolate, maybe a quarter teaspoon right in the center of the cookie. And then you put the other cookie on top and they kiss. 
and you just keep doing this part until you have all of your little bocce's made. The problem with these cookies is simple. You can't just eat one. And I promise you, you can't just eat one. So, as I finish my bocce's, what are you waiting for? Time to get back to the cutting board, and I'll see you next time on Christina Cooks. <laughs>